Come on, folks, we're about ready to start here. We need to clear the floor, please. We need to clear the floor, please. Clear the main floor of the chambers. That's okay? Okay, great. So, Cabrera and Lander. Going into your bag room? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please place all cell phones, all cell phones to vibrate, all electronic devices to vibrate. At this time, will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Thank you. Majority Leader, it's all yours. Good afternoon, I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. I am now reopening the recessed meeting of June 7th, being held today on June 28th, 2018. If you all could please be seated, we are now going to begin roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Morelli. Rannan. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Cornegie. Present. Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Drum. Present. Espinal. Present. Eugene. Gibson. Bobby. I'm here. Thank you. Jonai. Grudenchik. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Ku. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Moya. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Present. Ballone. Moya. Present. Van Bramer. Williams. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. I am now adjourning the recessed meeting of June 7th. We will now open the stated meeting of June 28th, 2018. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Rannan. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Here. Cornegie. Here. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Here. Drum. Yes. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Here. Jonai. 
Grudenchik. I'm still here. Holden. Kalos. King. Ku. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Jonai. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Present. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Here. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Williams. Thank you. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation delivered by Jeff Wells, lead pastor, Church of the Village, located at 201 West 13th Street in Manhattan. Welcome, and can we all please rise? Good afternoon. Let us enter together into a time of reflection. Creating and sustaining God Open our hearts and minds and spirits to your loving, forgiving, and compassionate presence. Even though we go through our days frequently ignoring your movements, you invest yourself in every moment of our lives and continually offer us guidance, forgiveness, and a loving spirit. And so we offer our deep gratitude today for all of the ways that you offer us unconditional love and amazing grace, all of those ways that we perceive and the ones that we fail to notice. We are thankful today to live in this amazing city. We are proud to live together in a place of such beautiful and incredible diversity that attracts people from around this nation and from around the world who seek to offer their gifts and also to grow and to benefit by living together in this place. We are also privileged to be in a city that was the birthplace of pride, a city in which millions of people come out every year to celebrate and affirm our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer siblings. And yet we also know that we have much work to do to create a just city in which everyone can thrive and feel safe. In the midst of this wonderful diversity, we still have segregated neighborhoods and schools. And in a city with $3 trillion in wealth, we have terrible and growing economic disparity, poverty, and homelessness. And so, God of love and justice, we lift up the members of this body who all bring a passion and experience and skills to this important work. They all desire to do no harm and to do all the good they can and remain connected to you and to all of our human family in their spirits. And so, loving one, we ask you to guide their deliberations, their discernment, and their decision-making. Help all of us to remember that each one of us is your beloved child and an amazing expression of your boundless creative love. And in all that we do today and beyond, may our actions always contribute to bringing justice, well-being, and peace to our city and to all who choose to live here. Amen. 
Thank you for your timely and inspirational prayer. Speaker Corey Johnson will now. I motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record by Speaker Corey Johnson. I make that motion, uh, Madam Majority Leader, that the invocation by Pastor Jeff Wells be spread full and upon the record. Thank you. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Barron. I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of May 9th, 2018 be adopted as printed. Thank you, Council Member Barron. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. M, excuse me, M65, City Debt and Reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M66 to M69, Charter Revision Commission appointees. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M70 through M76, various applications. Uh, coupled on a call-up vote at this time, I will ask for a roll call, roll call vote on all of today's land use call-ups. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Brannon. Cabrera. Permission to vote on all items and resolution, resolution in today's general calendar. Permission granted. Thank you. I on all. Thank you so much. Chin. I on all. Cohen. Constantinidis. I on all. Carnegie. Vote on. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye and all. Eugene. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye and all. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye and all. Kalos. King. Aye and all. Ku. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Vote aye on all land use call ups and request permission to vote aye on all items on today's general order calendar. Permission granted. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Aye on all. Moya. Aye on all. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye and all. Reynoso. Aye and all. Richards. Aye and all. Rivera. Aye and all. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye and all. Salamanca. Aye and all. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Aye. Valone. With permission, I'd like to vote on all items on today's calendar. Permission granted. Thank you, and I vote aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Williams. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Cumbo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. And now we will have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. First, I want to thank uh, Pastor Jeff Wells for delivering the invocation today. Pastor Wells leads the Church of the Village in my district, and I am fortunate that they call District 3 home. Pastor Wells and the Church of the Village have long fought for social justice and advocated for New Yorkers who need it most. I thank Pastor Wells for being here and for all he does for my district and for the city. Uh, Councilmember uh, Drum and I were in the Church of the Village not that long ago uh, for the commemoration of the founding of PFLAG, Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, which was founded in that church by Gene Manford. 
Uh, and so uh, Pastor Wells carries on a great tradition of social justice from the Church of the Village, and I'm really grateful for everything that he's done. Uh, before we begin with today's agenda, I'd like to take the time to honor someone who we are holding in our hearts this week. Lissandro Junior Guzman Feliz. New Yorkers everywhere are still in shock and mourning this young man who had a very bright, bright future. Junior was a member of the NYPD Explorers and dreamed of becoming a police officer. I attended Junior's wake and I met his parents. As painful as it was to be there and see Junior's heartbroken parents, it was amazing to see the community come out and support his family and friends. Our thoughts and prayers are with them during this extremely difficult time and we thank the NYPD for working hard to swiftly bring justice for Junior. I would also like to honor Chief of Fire Prevention, Ronald R. Spatafora, a 40-year veteran of the New York City Fire Department who succumbed to World Trade Center-related cancer. He supervised the rescue and recovery efforts at the World Trade Center site as a deputy chief and became the World Trade Center Chief of Safety for the entire recovery operation. Chief Spadafora, who is 63 years old, is the 178th member of the FDNY to die of World Trade Center related illnesses. If folks could rise so we could have a moment of silence for these individuals. Thank you. Right, we're going to jump into our docket for today. The council is going to vote on the following land use items. 45 Broad Street subway improvement. Uh, the council is approving a special permit to make, an, to make important transit improvements to the Broad Street Jay-Z station and the Wall Street 4-5 station to facilitate the development of a mixed-use skyscraper in Councilmember Chin's district, which will provide ADA access to the station that currently doesn't have it. Block 675 is in my district. The council is approving two applications uh, which are part of the Block 675 redevelopment. 601 West 29th Street, submitted by Douglas and Development, and 606 West 30th Street, submitted by Lalazarian Properties. Together, both applications propose to contribute a total amount of $52 million for the completion of the Hudson River Park improvements in exchange for transferring unused development rights from piers 59, 60, and 61 to facilitate the redevelopment of portions of Block 675. It will create over 300 units of affordable housing at no cost to the City of New York. The Council's modifications include reducing the maximum tower height of the Douglaston Development Tower to 591 feet, securing $4 million in additional funding to facilitate the completion of the park improvements between West 32nd and West 34th Streets, and designating open space funds to Chelsea Park and New York City Park in the neighborhood. The Council also negotiated an agreement for the acquisition of some space for the FDNY to provide a much needed EMS facility on 29th Street. I want to thank uh, the folks that are here uh, who have worked on this. I, my staff has spent a long time on this. I want to thank Eric Botcher and Lewis Cholden Brown and Raju Mann and Matt Green from my staff. We've spent over four years on this project and I'm very excited. Uh, we have a bunch of other uh, developments we're voting on today. One, I'm not going to read all of it. Uh, we are voting on a, an application in Councilmember Cumbo's District 14250 South Portland Avenue uh, and we're going to have an MIH Option 1 in that development. Uh, 180 Avenue of the Americas and council members uh, in, in my district. It's a commercial overlay. Uh, 1568 Broadway text amendment. It's for the Times Square Hotel. It has to do with signage requirements. It's in the theater subdistrict core. That's in Councilmember Powers' district. 85 Mercer Street. It's an application uh, giving a waiver to allow retail uses. That's in Councilmember Chin's district. The council is also approving seven individual landmarks. 95 Madison Avenue in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district. 
Hotel Seville in Councilmember Keith Powers' district, PS 109 in Councilmember Diana Ayala's district, Benjamin Franklin High School in Councilmember Diana Ayala's district, Richard Weber Harlem Packing House in Councilmember Diana Ayala's district, Dr. Maurice T. Lewis House in Councilmember Carlos Menchaca's district, the Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg in Councilmember Reynoso's district, East Village One, uh, which is an Article 11 40 year partial tax exemption. Uh, and that is in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district, as well as East Village 2, the same thing, in Councilmember Carlina Rivera's district, and La Cabana, the council will vote to approve an application for three related actions in order to facilitate new mixed income development at La Cabana properties in South Williamsburg, uh, on the south side of Williamsburg, which I believe is in Councilmember Reynoso's district. Um, next in the agenda, the council will vote on the following legislation. First, we will vote to co-name 95 thoroughfares and public places based on requests of council members whose districts include the location. Of these 95 co-names, seven are either a relocation of a previously enacted co-naming or a revision to the street sign installed with respect to previously enacted co-naming. There are too many council members to name uh, sponsoring the legislation, but we thank all of them. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Patrick Mulvihill and Chris Sartori. Next, we'll vote on a number of bills aiming to enforce a cleaner city, four of which are sponsored by Minority Leader Stephen Matteo. Introduction 851 would mandate the Department of Sanitation to create a plan for increasing enforcement against littering from vehicles in areas where such littering has been shown to be an issue. Introduction 655A would enhance the Department of Sanitation's ability to enforce prohibitions on unauthorized dumping by allowing it to use identifying information found among unlawfully dumped material as evidence of the identity of the person doing the dumping. Introduction 850A would increase civil penalties for littering from a vehicle. And Introduction 203B would raise the penalties for public littering for the second violation and the third violation within a 12-month period. The bill would not change the penalty for a first violation. That remains at $75. Introduction 656A, sponsored by Councilmember Danique Miller, would raise civil penalties and criminal fines for unlawful commercial dumping. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package of bills, Nicola Ben, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. Finally, the council is voting on several bills making affordable housing fairer for all New Yorkers. I am proud to sponsor two of these bills. Introduction 601A would require the city to report annually on the implementation of affordable housing plan with specificity, including the number of units targeted to be created or preserved each year and the number of units that are actually created or preserved in the preceding year in each neighborhood tabulation area. This legislation would also require the city to provide a summary of the current demand for affordable housing and a description of obstacles to fulfilling that demand. Introduction 772A, 722A would require the Department of Housing, of Housing Preservation and Development to create a system to track the expiration dates for all department regulatory agreements. HPD would also be required to report on the status of implementing such tracking system and once the tracking system is in place, the expiration dates of regulatory agreements and preservation efforts. Councilmember Donovan Richards has a bill today, introduction 607A, which would require the city to include measures to affirmatively further fair housing in its report on the creation or preservation of affordable housing. I want to thank the staff who worked on these bills, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum. Resolution 0423, sponsored by Council Members Williams and Cum Majority Leader Cumbo, we will vote on a resolution uh, sponsored uh, by uh, Council Members Williams and Cumbo, this resolution would recognize the tremendous contributions that New Yorkers of Haitian ancestry, ancestry have made to our city and nation. It would ceremonially designate an area of Flatbush in Brooklyn as Little Haiti. I want to thank the staff, Chris Sartori and Patrick Mulvihill, who worked on that. I want to congratulate all the members who are passing bills. This concludes our agenda for today's stated. I want to wish everyone a happy summer, and I look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Now we will move into the discussion of general orders, and we will begin with Councilmember Chaim Deutsch. Thank you. Um, so today I'm introducing, I actually had this four um, street, street renamings in my district that we will be voting on today, but I will just like to single out one. Um, that is for uh, Police Officer Leon Foxway. 
It was a typical day of work for police officer Leon Fox, a 10-year veteran of the NYPD. He was assigned to the 60th police precinct, and he was escorting a movie theater manager to the bank to deposit his daily earnings. As Officer Fox, the manager, approached the bank entrance, uh, he was approached by three men. The men grabbed the suitcase of cash and fled on foot. Officer Fox went in pursuit, and one of the criminals turned around and shot him, where he died at the scene at the corner of West 12th Street and Surf Avenue. At that point, I was approached by a police officer in the 60th Precinct, asking to see if we could do a street re renaming, where I agreed. Trying to contact any family, I finally contacted the pension board of the NYPD, where I was able to locate a son in California. I called up the son in California and explained to him what a council member is and explained to him what a street renaming is. And he sobbed. The son is 84 years old. He was seven years old when his dad was shot and killed at the corner of Surf Avenue and West 12th Street. Um, so I just want to say that this happened in 1941, 77 years ago. Officer Leon Fox has been largely forgotten by the history books. Today we're voting to rename the street corner where he lost his life. Surf Avenue and West 12th Street will stand as a memorial to Officer Fox and his sacrifice to protect the people of this city. And I'm proud that I'm asking all my colleagues to join me in voting for this uh, crucial street renaming to remember the memory of one of New York's finest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Deutsch, for keeping Officer Fox's memory alive. We will now hear from Minority Leader Matteo. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I think we could all agree that litter is a consistent problem throughout the city. Um, that is why during my first budget as council member in fiscal year 15, I supported a new initiative along with many of my colleagues called the New York City Cleanup. I think most of us would agree that this has been a very successful initiative judged by the widespread support and the fact that funding for it has increased each fiscal year since. With those funds, we on Staten Island have created a dedicated Staten Island clean team that has cleaned nearly 1,200 locations across the borough, removing weeds and graffiti and collecting 7,000 contractor bags of trash and literally tons of debris. For me, there are two major takeaways from this experience. One, the overwhelmingly positive response from constituents confirmed what I already knew, that people desperately want to keep their communities clean. This is a top quality of life issue for them. And two, the New York City Cleanup Initiative is not enough. We clean it up, people litter. We clean it again, people litter more. Drivers toss garbage out of their car windows. Despite all of our efforts, the problems still persist. We need to do more. That is the impetus behind the bills I introduce in this comprehensive legislative package to combat littering and illegal dumping. Intro 851 will help us create better enforcement strategies to tackle littering hotspots, specifically for locations where people dump from their vehicles. Intro 203 will increase fines to deter persistent litter offenders. Intro 850 specifically addresses those who toss garbage from their cars. Intro 655 will provide sanitation with the tools to really tackle legal dumping by establishing a rebuttable presumption that the person or company whose name is on the vehicle that transported an illegal dump material is responsible. Keeping our communities clean is not just about appearances or the pride we all feel when our streets are not strewn with garbage. There are obvious environmental benefits and real financial benefits to a clean city because we know people won't, do not want to live, to shop, and to work in a city that is strewn with garbage. I want to thank Sanitation uh, Committee Chair Antonio Reynoso for his strong support to the speaker, Jeff Baker, Laura Popa, Nicola Bean, Nadia Johnson, Jonathan Seltzer, and um, from my staff, Peter Spencer, David Carr, and Angela San. and I look forward to voting on these bills. Thank you. Thank you. We now have Council Member Ayala. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, today I'm proud to sponsor legislation to co-name East 118th Street and Park Avenue as firefighter William E. Woodland Place. Mr. Woodland was one of 12 African Americans in his class when he joined the fire department in January of 1982. He was assigned to Engine 39 on the Upper East Side until 1996 and later transferred to Engine 21 in Murray Hill, where he remained until his retirement in 2002. 
He was known as the mayor of his block as he organized annual block parties, an event that his family continues to host to honor his legacy. On September 11th, after seeing smoke travel into his neighborhood, Mr. Woodland rode his daughter's bike from East Harlem to the World Trade Center to help with rescue efforts. On August 20th, 2016, Mr. Woodland passed from 9-11 related causes. According to his family, he was a boisterous, trailblazing person who never lost hope. I am proud to honor such a brave person today and I thank you all for joining me in doing so. Additionally, I am thrilled to co-sponsor legislation to co-name 111th Street and 5th Avenue as 111th Street Old Timers Way. The 111th Street Old Timers Organization has coordinated the longest running block party in East Harlem, which brings together thousands of visitors each year in celebration of community, culture, and tradition. The largest attraction of the block party is the stickball game, a beloved staple of the community. The organization also engages in community efforts such as mentoring formerly incarcerated youth, sustaining cultural institutions, and supporting local artisans and businesses. The 111th Street Old Timers are a bedrock in our community and I am proud to support them. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Ayala. We will now ha hear from Councilmember Gorenchek. Thank you, um, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I wanted to speak today about the young people uh, at Martin Van Buren High School um, we don't hear many wonderful stories coming out of the New York City public education system, but of course there are countless wonderful stories. And my last uh, event before I came to the state of today was their graduation. Six years ago when Mr. Sam Soche took over that school, it's a renewal school, the graduation rate was 45%. And today I'm happy to report that uh, the preliminary graduation rate, the 250 some odd children that graduated today, young people, is now 76%. It's a testament to these young people and to their educators. Uh, most of those children do not reside in my district. They come uh, from very far away and many of them have to get up before six in the morning to travel to Eastern Queens. Um, but I'm, I want to know this, I wanted to make sure that their story is on the record of the city council and I want to congratulate each and every one of them, the educators, their families, and everybody who worked so hard. Um, I also did want to note that I was um, happy to preside over the Parks Committee meeting this week where we passed um, pre-considered intro uh, 988 out of committee. There are a lot of famous people um, being honored today by this council and when the mayor signs that legislation we'll make these thoroughfares. Uh, some true all-time greats, uh, like the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali and Ruby Dee and Asi Davis. And we had a uh, New York Times Magazine reporter uh, come to talk to us about Ida B. Wells and the great work that she did reporting on lynchings um, in the Deep South and the not-so-Deep South. We're also honoring um, two people, that uh, Mary Audrey Gallagher and Andy Pops King, who had something to do with making council members as well, not only doing great things. So I'm delighted um, to have passed this bill, and I thank you for listening to me today, my colleagues. Thank you, and we are now going to hear from Councilmember Rodriguez, but I just want to remind our colleagues we are now just focused on the legislation that we are voting upon, as well for many are discussing street co-namings as well. Thank Councilmember you. Rodriguez. Yeah, thank you. Today I'm proud to bring important co-name to Northern Manhattan to New York City, I want to highlight a, a special one for me, the one after Bishop Anolfo Romero, a Catholic leader and a human rights leader who was assassinated in El Salvador. El Obispo Romero was a champion of the poor who became a human rights icon in Latin America when he was killed by a right-wing death squad in 1980. Hoy estamos poniéndole nombre a la calle in Washington High, la 179 for Washington, con el nombre del Obispo Romero, un símbolo de una persona que se dedicó a defender a los pobres, a defender el derechos humanos en América Latina y en todo el mundo. Today we call him 179 for Washington, in front of where we have the great undocumented woman, Amanda, who came from Guatemala and she lives in a sanctuary, a church. He is in front where we call him that intersection after this great human rights leader, Bishop Anolfo Romero. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now hear from Councilmember King. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> Majority Leader. 
I just wanted to just say thank you today to everyone as we're voting on our street renamings. Um, I have two that is going to be we're voting on today. One is Sandy E. Gresham Way, the president, um, wife of 1199, George Gresham's wife. But also a very special one for me today is the, the, the young man who created me, my father, Andy Pops King Jr., for the work he's done to save about 10,000 young men's lives growing up who became doctors, lawyers, judges, administrators, and as my great friend uh, Gredinja just said, elected officials as well as creating me. So I just want to put on the record, thanks, Pops. We love you. And the North Bronx and the Bronx and our young men are a greater place uh, with you being in all our lives. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from Councilmember Richards. Thank you. Uh, earlier this year, the Fair Housing Act turned 50 years old, and it's clear that we still have a lot of work to do to ensure everyone has an opportunity to find a safe and affordable place to live, especially with the Trump administration showing little to no faith that they will continue to follow this law. Segregated communities create vast disparities in resources, health care, education, and opportunity. It prevents bright students from attaining their full potential. It keeps the unemployed and underemployed struggling to make ends meet. It's the prime reason high poverty neighborhoods exist in this city. As we work to desegregate our education system, addressing racial disparities in housing will have a direct impact on creating more diverse communities. While our trains, buses, and workplaces are the most diverse in the world, our schools, homes, and neighborhoods are the most divided. By creating a comprehensive plan to address historic patterns of segregation, we can finally begin to address all of the systematic factors that have led to a lack of resources for schools, jobs, and public amenities in communities of color across the city. Every child should get to experience the beauty and uniqueness of the hundreds of different cultures spread out across the five boroughs and learn the importance of valuing different races and ethnicities firsthand. Your zip code shouldn't be a detriment to opportunity. I would like to thank the speaker uh, and Councilmember Lander, our legislative division, and Jordan Gibbons and, uh, and Serena on my staff for their work on this bill, and I urge my colleagues to vote aye on it. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from Councilmember Barron. Uh, thank you. I wanted to just speak on some of those persons who are included in the co-namings. Uh, Frank and Doris Bell, who established Bell Funeral Home, which is in our community so well known uh, for the care and attention that they give to their clients. Uh, Ida B. Wells, who was an educator, a journalist, Owned, co owned a newspaper, and she highlighted lynchings and the fact that those who were lynched were not accused of crimes, but that they were challenging white businesses and white establishments, mainly in the South, but also coming towards the North. And she did that in the face of being black and being a woman at a time when both of those were impediments to achieving your goals. Uh, the New York Vens Court. The New York Vens was the first black professional basketball team. They're not well known, but if you check your history, you'll find out about the great accomplishments, particularly talking about, as we gave acknowledgement today to Haiti, the fact that uh, Jean-Jacques Dessalines was the first president of Haiti, and Toussaint Louverture led the rebellion in Haiti that was successful, that forced the United States, that gave the United States an opportunity to acquire what we thought of as the Louisiana Purchase from the French and had a great contribution to making a significant impact during that war. And finally, Muhammad Ali. Oh, Asi and Ruby Davis, who were not just actors but were activists, they defended um, Paul Robeson at a time when he was a target of this government. They dis they defended so many others. They participated in the protests that took place at One Police Plaza that were organized by my husband and Reverend Daughtry. And finally, Muhammad Ali, because this is a person who put his professional future on the line. He sacrificed it. He was willing to give up his career. He gave it up, not knowing what the outcome would be, but knowing that the cause that he was fighting for and the position that he had taken was a just one. So I want to commend all of those who presented these names for co-namings. Thank you. Thank oh, you. And I'm sorry, my colleague, uh, King, Andy King, his father as well. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councilmember Barron. We'll now hear from Councilmember Powers. Thank you, and thank you. Uh, we share many of the feelings and beliefs of those who just spoke. I wanted to welcome today into the chamber uh, the son of Jimmy Breslin, a legend here in New York City, to uh, be here for the renaming of 42nd Street and 2nd Avenue in my district, Jimmy Breslin Way. Um, just uh, last year, we lost a legend in New York City, somebody who wrote about this city, including this body, with passion and fervor that we have not seen in a very long time. And my predecessor, Councilmember Garodnik, along with the mayor, did a temporary street renaming in his honor where the former Daily News building was. And today, we get to make that permanent and honor somebody who contributed to this city and the fabric of this city, and somebody who reminds us the importance of media at a time where it is being undermined every single day. So first of all, I want to welcome the Breslin family for being here today, and certainly uh, look forward to putting that sign up in my district. I also um, wanted to welcome those here with the Rudin family to join Jack Rudin's name, along with Lou Rudin, in my district as well, to honor those who have contributed so much to our city as well. And, and finally, just two more, I wanted to um, acknowledge a slain FBI agent, I think, I believe it's in uh, uh, Councilor Cummel's office, Edwin Woodruff. I have constituents, FBI members, who actually reached out to me about this, feeling passionately to have this street renamed, and I know that they're watching today as well and are, are honored to have that street renamed. And, and finally, to both Councilmember King and to Councilmember Drum, I know this is also a special day to be honoring people so special to you. Um, who I know we, we wish could be here today to see that. So congratulations. And of course, the greatest fighter who said he refused to fight, Muhammad Ali. It is always an honor to be uh, honoring such a great legend in this city. Thanks so much. Thank you, Councilmember Powers. And we will now finally hear from Councilmember Steve Levin. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Today we are voting, uh, as my colleagues have said, on the street co-naming of civil rights leader Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells needs no introduction. Her work as a journalist, abolitionist, suffragist, civil rights leader shining a bright light on lynching throughout our country, especially in the South, has left an indelible legacy on our fight for equality and racial justice. And her muckraking and investigative work has trod a path for journalists to this day. In this political moment, when the notion of a free press is being actively undermined, demonized, and attacked by our president, our responsibility to honor the legacy of leaders like Ida B. Wells is more urgent than ever. Yet while her legacy is often well known, her time spent in Brooklyn is much less so. It was here that she gave talks and inspired the beginning of the NAACP's women's club movement, focusing on the need to address the intersections of race and gender and civil rights. Ms. Wells was ahead of her time, and so it is long overdue that we grant her family this, this honor today. I want to acknowledge and thank her great-granddaughter, Michelle Duster, who is leading the campaign to build a monument in their home city of Chicago, along with the journalist Nicole Hannah-Jones, local historian Jacob Morris, and Brooklyn Community Board, too, for their support in co-naming Gold Street between Myrtle and Willoughby Streets in Brooklyn, Ida B. Wells Place. There's much more we need to do to honor the contribution of visionary women in history. In fact, less than 10% of monuments nationwide are women. I am proud to be part of this effort today to help change that. Thank you. Thank you, and I want to applaud all of my colleagues for the groundbreaking street co-namings that are going to immortalize the history and herstory of so many New Yorkers and those around the country that have made this country a great place. We are now going to have report of special committees. None. We are now going to have reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings. Intros 601A, 607A, and 722A, Affordable Housing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use LU89 through LU94, Special Hudson River Park District. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.7B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. 
excuse me, LU 107 and Reso 424, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled on general orders. LUs 108 and 109, Special Downtown Brooklyn District. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.7B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L, excuse me, LU 110 and Reso 425 through LU 113 and Reso 428, tax exemptions and zoning amendments. Coupled to general orders. LU 114 and Reso 429 through LU 121 and Reso 436, sidewalk cafe and landmark designations. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 126 and Reso 437 through preconsidered LU 131 and Reso 442, East Village. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 132 and Reso 443 through preconsidered LU 134 and Reso 445, La, La Cabana, Brooklyn. Uh, coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation. Preconsidered intro 988, naming of 95 thoroughfares and public places. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. Intros 203B, 655A, 656A, 850A, and 851. Littering and unlawful dumping. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, intro 720, site safety training. Laid over. LU 84 and Reso 446 through LU 109 and Reso 454, various applications. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled to general orders, and at this time, I would ask for a roll call vote, roll call vote on all items on today's general order calendar. Lanceman. Aye. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 84, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, and 94, and the accompanying resolutions. As you may know, I'm always looking at the percentage of housing that we are providing that is so-called affordable. And part of what I've noticed is the affordability does not match what matches the percentages of people who live in New York City at those income bands. So for those reasons, I'm voting no on those and I on all the others. Thank you. Thank you. Brannon. Chin. I on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinides. Aye on all. Carnegie. I vote aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye on all. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to highlight that I'm joined by a very bright constituent of mine, Julio Pagan, who will be voting in, in, uh, in my favor. Aye on all. I'll just need you to also vote aye on all, Councilmember Espinosa. Aye on all. <laughs> Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon to all of our colleagues. I, too, want to join in supporting today's agenda that includes a number of streets to be renamed and co-named after prominent members of our community. And in addition to Ida B. Wells and Muhammad Ali and Sandra Gresham and Andy Pop King Jr., um, as well as the mother of our finance chair, Council Member Drum, I certainly want to acknowledge two fallen NYPD detectives that we are going to be co-naming streets after in the borough of the Bronx. Uh, NYPD Detective Joseph Lem, who was killed in the line of duty in Afghanistan, as well as NYPD Detective Mio Sotis Familia, who was a detective in the 46th Precinct where I live in the borough of the Bronx. And we're going to recognize the one year anniversary of her tragic passing July 5th. Um, two members of service who served us well, and certainly many of the members of service that we're honoring and renaming streets after both NYPD and FDNY certainly want to recognize that. And I want to congratulate Council Member Williams and Majority Leader Cumbo uh, in recognizing the incredible contributions of the Haitian American community. Um, while I may be from Trinidad, I certainly honorary consider myself a member of the community as well and want to thank you for the resolution and recognizing little Haiti. And I also want to congratulate our speaker and Council Member Richards and others who are passing a, a very important package related to affordable housing and certainly looking at a lot of a 
lot of the trends that many of our communities have experienced when you talk about segregation and not making sure that affordable housing is truly affordable and available to every New Yorker. I look forward to today's vote and certainly all the work that lies ahead. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Joan I. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. I just want to remember also um, that we are naming two uh, thoroughfares in my district after houses of worship, uh, one after the Ahmadiyya Muslim community uh, at McLaughlin and the Grand Central Parkway, Armenia Way, which is just above the LIE and Bayside Hills, and after our fallen heroes and all those who died on 9-11, Bayside Hills Memorial Way, where each and every year hundreds of people turn out to commemorate uh, those who've fallen. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. Holden. Aye on all. King. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. In honor of Audrey Galligan, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. And congratulations to Council Members King and Drum on these very meaningful street code names as well. Thank you. Levine. Maisel. Menchaca. I on all. Moya. I on all. Perkins. Powers. I on all. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. With congratulations to Councilmember Mario and Little Haiti, I vote I on all. Richards. Vote I on all. Rivera. I on all. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Rosenthal. Thank you. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to be voting aye, aye on all, but I do want to align myself with uh, Council Member Barron's uh, comments on housing. I'm voting aye because I, I have a history of just supporting those who uh, choose option one. But my hope is that uh, this body, we will look at MIH. Uh, we know now that it, it was not what it was supposed to be. I think we failed in our duties as we move forward. We should relook at that because uh, most of the zones that come through this, through here, we know can use some additional affordability. So I'm glad it does have MIH option one, which is the only option I will support. Um, but we do need to relook at this. Thank you, Councilman Barron, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Van Bramer. I vote aye. Jaeger. May I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I am voting aye on all, and I'd like to uh, give a specific mention to uh, the package of legislation that we're voting on with regard to dumping and uh, uh, littering and trash management and um, uh, particular congratulations to Mr. Minority Leader and Council Member Miller. I am co-sponsoring two of these bills along with them. Um, and the reason that I'm doing this is, you know, I didn't come here to, uh, to seek to raise fines on the people of New York, um, and none of my colleagues did, but this is, has truly uh, become a scourge on our neighborhoods. Uh, as we go through our neighborhoods and we see the illegal dumping, particularly uh, the, the kind of dumping that uh, introduction um, 656A seeks to address, which is regard to illegal dumping for commercial activities, it is simply a scourge on the neighborhoods that we represent. Um, people are doing this. They are, they are truly bad actors. Um, and with regard to the uh, neighborhood waste baskets, they are a personal gripe of mine. I, have been on a, I was on a community board before I came here for 18 years. Uh, we fight to keep our neighborhoods clean. We try to get the extra sanitation pickups. And the one thing that we always hear back from sanitation is that no matter how much they go and clean up these streets, Quiet in the chambers. That we put out there, uh, people simply put their household trash alongside. And it was constantly a frustrating uh, experience that uh, sanitation could not write summonses to people who, unless they actually saw them put the trash alongside the wastebasket. This uh, package of legislation addresses that. Uh, these are good bills, and again, Mr. Minority Leader and Councilmember Miller, thank you very much for your leadership on this. I vote aye on all. Thank you.
Ulrich. A permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I just want to add my uh, uh, thanks to the council and my colleagues for approving the street renaming bills. There's uh, several, well, all of them are truly deserving and notable in their own right. Uh, but I just want to mention just a, a handful of them. In my district, we are honoring Maria Thompson, a longtime civic leader in Woodhaven, uh, who really dedicated her life to the betterment of her community. Uh, we're, we're really looking forward to that and, and uh, keeping her memory uh, and her service alive and well, and uh, we want to honor her in a special way. There's, I, I noticed that uh, we're also uh, naming a street after Sri Prakash Gosai, uh, who was a pandit in the local Hindu Mandir in Ozone Park. He founded it on 101st Avenue, and uh, he was a great man. And also, of course, the late, great Jimmy Breslin. I know it's in Councilmember Powers' district, uh, but his son is here with us today, Kevin Breslin. He lives in the Rockaways. And uh, Jimmy really changed the face of the city and contributed uh, to, you know, good government in an enormous way through, through his articles and the newspapers. And, um, you know, he is certainly deserving of this honor. And all the people that are being mentioned, um, you know, they're with the Lord now, but we want to keep their names out there and honor them in a special way. So I want to vote aye on all and say thank you to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Matteo. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47 the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of LUs 84, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. We will now have the introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. Now we will have the discussion of resolutions, starting with Council Member Jamani Williams. Thank you. This is on resolutions, correct? Yes, resolutions. Thank you very much. Uh, today we're going to be passing a resolution uh, to um, concretize Little Haiti as a resolution uh, in the city. So I want to thank uh, the majority leader. Uh, Councilmember Mark Trader, Councilmember uh, Espinoff, for, and of course the Speaker for all the work uh, that they've done to help get us here. And of course recognize uh, the first uh, Haitian-born elected official, Councilmember Matthew Eugene, that we have in our body here. Uh, I'm sorry, the first uh, Haitian-born City Council Member, uh, Matthew Eugene, who we have right here in this body. Uh, it is uh, with great pride as I, I myself and Councilmember Eugene represent the largest uh, the largest grouping of Haitians and Haitian Americans outside of Haiti and Florida to have the body designate um, this area in, our, in my district. Um, as I mentioned when we did the proclamation, it is a lot of source of pride because uh, when many of us were younger, um, unfortunately, um, like the president calling this uh, country s holes, uh, there were many folks that tried to make people ashamed of two black cultures in particular. Well, I forgot I had two minutes, let me close up. But uh, hey, uh, Haitians and Africans were some of them. And uh, as a black man, I'm always proud because um, I'm free, because of uh, the actions of Toussaint Louverture, who are also doing street renaming for today, and Jean Jacques Dossaline, who will be doing later. And as an American, doubling the size of Haiti. So I'm so proud of America. I'm so proud that we're able to, uh, to provide this, and the Haitian culture should be celebrated from here and abroad. With that, I'll pause and just say, hopefully, I can get the support of everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Williams, and it's been an honor to work with you on this important resolution. Pre-considered resolution 423 is a resolution ceremonially designating Flatbush Avenue within the boundaries of East 16th Street, Parkside Avenue, Brooklyn Avenue, Avenue H, and Church Avenue as Little Haiti. As far as pre-considered resolution 423 goes, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. This is a most historical day for the city of New York. We will now move on to general discussions. And we will begin with Council Member Barron. Thank you. I had some comments that I was going to make last stated, but I'm going to change because next week we'll be celebrating the 4th of July. So I just wanted to share with you the speech from Frederick Douglass from 1853. 
What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license. Your national greatness, swelling vanity. Your sound of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciation of tyrant bass founded fronted impudence. Your shout of liberty and equality, hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy. A thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of the United States at this very hour. So then we know that about 10 years after that, uh, Abraham Lincoln signed the so-called Emancipation Proclamation. But what that did was it declared freedom to those who were enslaved in the Confederate States. There were four states that were still a part of the Union that had slavery, and he did not declare the slaves in those states to be free. So that was a mockery and a sham. But we do know that we celebrate Juneteenth as a day when supposedly all of those who had been enslaved were declared free. And we know following that, we got the 13th Amendment, which ended slavery everywhere except as a punishment for a crime, and that became the basis for what we are now experiencing as mass incarceration. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. We will now hear from Councilmember Rose. Thank you, Chair. I, um, I wanted to talk about two bills that I was going to sponsor last time. Um, so I just want to briefly um, call your attention to them. Intro 982, which will establish an office of the waterfront, which would be responsible for coordinating among the various city agencies mat matters that relate to the waterfront, supporting waterfront management advisory board, and implementing the New York City comprehensive waterfront plan. Um, and since the waterfront is like our sixth borough, um, it behooves us to not only have the waterfront management advisory board, but also to develop this comprehensive plan, and that's intro 982. And then Reso 378 calls upon New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign critical gun safety legislation, A6640, S7828, and A7021, and A7023. 7023-63. This package of bills would establish the framework for a gun safety research fund. Because as we look in and horror on the continuing cascade of gun violence and mass shootings that is terrorizing our schools and communities across the country, it is critical that we work diligently to address this public health crisis. And this fund will help New York lead the way in developing ways to properly treat it. And then um, I sadly announce and bid farewell to my legislative aide, Lisa Thompson. She will be greatly missed. She's truly an asset to my, um, my office. She's irreplaceable, and I will truly miss the color-coded budget spreadsheets, her enthusiasm, initiative, and organizational skills. I love Lisa, and I wish her well on her new endeavors. Thank you. Beautiful tribute. Thank you so much. Council Member Cornegie. I'd like to take a moment to draw your attention to two I'd like to take a moment to draw your attention to two bills I'm introducing today that I believe go a long way toward making our city fairer for the New York for New Yorkers who depend on us. First, I'd like to make you all aware of 995, which I am introducing to help protect the owners of one and two family homes who offer extra space in their abodes on a short-term basis from enforcement of the city's illegal conversion law. Uh, law 45 of 2012 by the Mayor's Office of Special Enforcement. This also brings the city's regulation of short-term rental market on par with the state's multiple dwelling law, which prohibits the rental of units in multiple dwellings with three or more units for less than 30 days. As someone who represents areas of the city where middle-class people of color struggle to make ends meet, I have and always will support the ability of individual homeowners to share in the economic opportunities of the sharing economy as a means to combat the affordability crisis. 
This is precisely why I believe Intro 995 is important. At the same time, I understand we cannot turn a blind eye to the abuses of the affordable housing market where we've seen tenants get evicted and displaced by unscrupulous commercial operators who misuse online platforms such as Airbnb for their own profit. From renters in my district covering Bed-Stuy and Crown Heights to tenants in Upper Manhattan, the Bronx, and every community in between, we need better enforcement tools to identify and stop the bad actors who are removing affordable housing and driving up rental prices for everyday New Yorkers. This is why I also support Councilmember Carolina Rivera's legislation to require online platforms to provide the city with the proper data to do its job more efficiently and thoughtfully. This bill will give us the information to separate and punish the bad actors who are hurting our neighborhoods, taking away housing, and taking with them all the profits from the local homeowners who are acting in good faith to supplement their income. Coupled with Intro 995, I'm confident we can ensure the enforcement of Intro 981 to go after the bad actors remains true to its intent. The second bill I'd like to speak to is Intro 996, which I guess I'll have to get to at another time because I'm running out of time. Um, but I also would just take, like to take one second to acknowledge uh, my friend and mentor who unfortunately killed himself yesterday, Mr. McCall, who was facing uh, some mental health issues and was unable to deal with them. Um, we have a mental health crisis in this city that is at epic proportions. Um, and I'm just ha happy to have a speaker and a council that addresses that and has done so in the budget. Um, so thank you. I'm so sorry for your loss. Council Member Chen. Thank you. I would like to draw my colleagues' attention to Reso 414, a resolution that urges the federal government to reinstate two-way tolling on the Verrazano Bridge through an act of Congress. 32 years ago, congressional leaders moved to remove two-way tolling on the Verrazano Bridge to ease congestions for vehicles leaving Staten Island. Unfortunately, this created unintended consequences in Lower Manhattan. Almost immediately, we began seeing a flood of truck traffic in neighborhoods like Little Italy, Tribeca, and Hudson Square. Canal Street and all of the feeder streets north and south of it are now overflowing with vehicles heading to the Holland Tunnel, stuck in stop and go traffic during rush hour. The congestion has simply moved to Lower Manhattan. This is unfair to the residents that live there as well as workers who travel in and out from other boroughs like Staten Island. Un unlike 30 years ago, tollless technology can allow vehicles to move through tolled area without stopping. By splitting the current cost of entering Staten Island in half and reinstating two-way tolling on the Verrazano Bridge with the same fee, we can ensure an equal distribution of truck traffics without increasing commuting costs or diminishing the quality of life of Staten Islander. I hope that my colleague, particularly those living on Staten Island, will join me in this endeavor and sign on to Reso 414. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. We will now hear from Councilmember Williams, followed by Councilmember Holden. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I uh, just wanted to call my attention to uh, three bills. Uh, one is on a homeless shelter siting plan to develop a citywide shelter siting plan for implementation by DHS. A green building waiver, which waives building permit freeze for building on renovations projects one to two, four families that increase energy or water efficiency and shorefront or release notification requiring DEP and OEM to publicly report on their websites and notify the council affected Council members and affected community boards in the event of any release of oil. Uh, I neglected to mention a co-naming uh, on Flatlands Avenue in my district after firefighter Will William Gormley, a District 45 resident who died unfortunately due to illnesses from working at Ground Zero on 9-11. Um, I also want to just lift up the name of Alessandro Guzman Feliz, also known as Junior. Uh, it's been a motion for me looking at that. I uh, can no longer look at the the horror on his face and those videos and those pictures. I just want to thank everyone that posted other pictures and other videos uh, that showed his life and showed him in a better light. And hopefully the press conference today uh, will see even more funding uh, for young people. Yes, when we see something, we should say something. Yes, those young people and others need to be held accountable. Uh, but we uh, cannot talk about personal accountability 
without giving the resources for people to make better decisions. And so if we see something, we should say something, including the lack of educational opportunities, the lack of proper housing, and the lack of jobs, and fill those as well. Lastly, uh, we are in danger now with the conservative court determined to strip away basic rights. We've seen the Muslim man, we've seen Janice, the likelihood that Kennedy will try and will make even more. We have to be steadfast, uh, whether it's LGBTQ rights, Roe v. Wade, segregation and education, fair housing, uh, independent redistricting, fair elections. There's a problem. Uh, there is uh, consequences in elections. There is also consequences in how parties uh, administer themselves and force people to feel some ways not to participate in those elections. And I hope everyone lo learns their lessons as we move forward uh, in 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Williams. We'll be followed by Councilmember Holden and finally by Councilmember Levin. Thank you, Majority Leader Combo. Uh, today I have two intros and six resolutions. I want to highlight a couple of them. Um, I'm doing uh, an intro to require 311 Service Center to respond accurately and honestly if the agency is unable to respond to a service request or complaint. Right now, many times they don't get to it and they, uh, they leave you hanging. They don't say anything about what happened to your complaint. So now they, they're compelled to say if they can't get to it. Uh, and I think that's an important measure. Also, I'm doing a resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to create more districts of gifted and talented programs and classes and create a pathway for admissions to gifted and talented intermediate school programs. Um, and um, also uh, a couple of, uh, couple of uh, local laws in relations to establishing a task force on vehicles registered out of state. It's a, a problem in many neighborhoods and uh, people are uh, obviously getting around New York State insurance rates and registering their vehicles uh, improperly out of state. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levin. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, first, I want to acknowledge uh, four students who are this year's, part of this year's cohort of Hope Reichback Fellows. Hope Reichback was a staff member here at the City Council in my office, and for the last seven years, six years, we've been having fellowships that provide um, uh, internships to Brooklyn-based not-for-profits for, for college-age students here in New York City, so I want to uh, welcome Aliza Khan, who is a Brooklyn co College student who's in, uh, having a fellowship at the Brooklyn Defenders this summer. Jarrell Gray, who's a University of Rochester student who has a, a fellowship at bed -Stuy Restoration. Nashani Rodriguez, who's a SUNY Albany student who has a fellowship at Brooklyn Community Services. And Razna Ekra, who is a Lafayette College student who has a fellowship at Safe Horizons. So I want to welcome them today. I also want to uh, speak for a moment on the retirement announcement of Justice Anthony Kennedy, which is a stark reminder of the importance of elections and the impact that they have, not just on Congress and the presidency, but also on our nation's courts. Uh, this week, we have seen the power of the Supreme Court to roll back civil rights and civil liberties and advance the Trump, Trump administration's political agenda. Uh, the courts, Trump versus Hawaii ruling, upheld the president's ban on travel from several predominantly Muslim countries, allowing for broad discrimination against our Muslim neighbors and causing the separation of more immigrant families. As Justice Sotomayor rightly stated in her dissenting opinion, this decision is no better than the 1944 ruling that allowed for the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. Um, with, with Justice Kennedy's retirement, these attacks will only get worse. Roe versus Wade and the LG, sorry, the Supreme Court also ruled this week to allow crisis pregnancy centers, unlicensed facilities that often give the impression that they provide abortion care, the ability to lie to clients about the services that they do or do not provide, and shame, harass, or mislead women looking for comprehensive medical care. Um, these will only get, these uh, attacks on, uh, on basic rights will only get worse. Roe v. Wade and the LGBTQ rights that have been upheld by Justice Kennedy's decisions um, are at risk. Um, the stakes for human rights are too high. The American people deserve a voice in this matter, and so Congress must hold off on any confirmation vote until after the November election. History is watching. We cannot let excuses of civility allow us to be complacent or complicit. So I want everybody to call their U.S. Senators, 202-224-3121, and urge them to follow their own rules and not vote until next year in the new Congress. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Levin. Councilmember Williams for brief remarks. Thank you so much. Uh, I forgot to uh, announce uh, the departure of uh, Mike Toomey, my legislative director, so I just want to say thank him and welcome Mike Wright, who comes up from HPD and president of MYD. Thank you. 
Thank you, and I am uh, honored to close out this meeting today with Speaker Corey Johnson. I want to thank you all for an incredible year. We have made tremendous strides budget-wise, legislative-wise. We've made a bit of history, but we've made a whole lot of history, and I'm very proud to share it. My parents are in the back today who have come today to celebrate our final session and meeting. And I just want to encourage all the council members, yes, council members need a break and they do need rest, so I do recommend that you all take some sort of break over these next couple of months. And I will now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson for closing remarks. Everyone have a very nice 4th of July. Be safe, spend time with your friends and family. Uh, today's stated meeting of June 28th, 2018 is now adjourned. Thank you.